Welcome back to Kit Guru guys. Today's video is a big one, or at least it's the start of a big one because we're back with another one of our custom builds. So this is not just gonna be a simple, standard, straightforward build. We are working in partnership with AMD. So this is gonna be a big custom build, modifying parts, taking things to pieces, painting things, possibly wrapping things with vinyl, uh, modifying everything basically. So make sure you stick around for this one because it's gonna be a good one. Regulars to the Kit Guru channel will know that as well as reviewing hardware, I often do build videos as well. Standard sponsored builds with a vendor's theme running through them. But I really like to get my teeth into these big custom builds where I modify, customize, disassemble, reassemble, sometimes break things and create a unique system that you will not find anywhere else. And that is what we are starting today, working in partnership with AMD. And the system is going to be based on what AMD calls its AAA systems. So that means a system that includes an AMD Ryzen CPU, an AMD Radeon graphics card, and is optimized using AMD software, such as Ryzen Master and the Adrenaline software with features like FSR. So that is what we're gonna be doing today, or at least starting today. We'll take a look at the software later on in the series because this is gonna be a series with multiple videos probably four videos in total for the entire series. So we'll look at the software later and how the AMD software can improve performance and optimize how the system runs. But before we do that, we wanna get back to looking at the mods and the hardware that we're gonna be using. So some of the hardware is in front of me. I'm gonna look at the water cooling stuff and the chassis in a bit. But first we're gonna just take a look at the core components that is gonna make up the system. So. The motherboard, you've probably seen this motherboard or you've seen me use this motherboard on the channel before. This is the X570 Aorus Extreme from Gigabyte. Really high-end motherboard. And I think it's gonna be a good motherboard to mod as well because there's a lot of shrouds on here and M.2 heat sinks, chipset heat sinks. And a lot of the board is covered with heat sinks and shrouds. So I'm gonna be disassembling this board later because the theme of the system or the color scheme of the system doesn't match this board as it comes as standard. So that is going to be disassembled and we're gonna be doing quite a bit of work on the motherboard. And then the CPU obviously is AMD. So this is an AMD Ryzen 7 5800X3D. So AMD's latest gaming CPU and most powerful gaming CPU. So as you probably realize, this is going to be a gaming system and it's gonna be AMD's most powerful gaming system. And because of that, the graphics card is a Radeon RX 6950 XT and this is the Gigabyte Gaming OC card. So again, this card, as it is standard, it's not going to be matching in with the theme that I'm going for. So the whole heat sink, the fan shroud, everything's gonna be removed. Uh, we're gonna be water cooling this card and I'm also gonna be doing a bit of mod to the water block as well to make sure that it fits in with the theme because the theme I'm going for with this system is gonna be more or less a white and silver uh, kind of theme. So as you can see, these parts at the moment don't match that theme. So we're gonna be doing a lot of modding and customizing of these parts. And then onto the system memory that does match the theme because this is the G-Skill Trident Z Royal Elite, as you can see. And it's the one with the silver heat sinks. You can get this with either silver or gold heat sinks. So this as it is, won't need any modding because this is gonna really work well with the theme. And then storage, we're gonna be throwing a decent amount of storage at this system and it's all gonna be M.2 NVMe storage, all gonna be PCIe Gen 4 storage. So for the operating system, we're gonna be using this Aorus Gen 4 S SSD, that's just a one terabyte SSD for the operating system. And then for additional storage, we have two of these two terabyte Kingston Fury Renegade uh, M.2 SSDs. And again, like I said, these are all PCIe Gen 4, so they're gonna be fast storage. And then powering the system is a Seasonic Prime TX1000. So this is a one kilowatt power supply and it is an 80 plus titanium efficiency rated unit. We'll be doing mods to the cables of that because Seasonic make great power supplies, but their cables are not the best looking things in the world. So we're gonna be making some custom cables, custom length and custom sleeving. I'll show you the sleeving and everything we're gonna be doing with that later. Then for the fans, we're going with what seems to be everybody's favorite at the moment. These are the Lianli Unifan. These are the SL120 RGB. We've got 
for three packs of these, I plan to use two 480mm radiators, so they'll need at least four fans per radiator. I may run them in a push-pull configuration, so we might use all 12 fans. And as you can see, these are the white and silver versions, so they'll fit in perfectly with the theme of the system. So looking forward to using them. I've not used them in a build before, so they're going to look nice. And that is basically what makes up all the core components of the system. So if you've been paying attention so far and you've not started to drift off like sometimes I do when I'm watching YouTube videos, uh, you'll realize that we don't have a case for the system yet. Well, that's because the system is going to be wall mounted. So for that, we're gonna be using this, which is the Cooler Master Master Frame 700. You can see I've got the motherboard just sat here, roughly where it'd be, be a bit higher up than that when it's installed in the system. It's a really strong, really heavy frame this it doesn't look like much but when you actually lift it out of the box it weighs an absolute ton you've got these like side wings that flap about you can either have it just completely straight or you can angle these in to give it like a bit of a 3d three-dimensional feel to it and there's also these two brackets or arms that stick out so you can potentially just have this on your desk and use these as feet to support it from falling over. And then there's a piece of glass that goes in between those as well. Or if you remove the motherboard out of the way, you can see here there's a visa mount, so you can visa mount it to the wall. This again is not the right color for the theme of the build. So I'm either gonna send this off to be professionally painted or paint it myself or wrap it with a vinyl wrap. Not entirely sure yet, I'll cover this in a future video. The motherboard will be sat here. I'm planning on putting radiators on both of these wings. Technically these only fit a 360 mil radiator, but I'm thinking if it's wall mounted, the radiators can hang over either side. Not sure whether I'm gonna use the glass or not. And, and maybe, maybe could utilize these brackets or arms for something else if I don't use the glass. But one thing that I'm definitely going to be doing is installing what is inside this box. So, have a quick look. Got some HDMI cables, some standoffs, some HDMI bits and bobs. And then actually inside the box is this, which is a LCD display. So I'm gonna be using this for system monitoring, so uh, temperatures and clock frequencies and stuff like that. Now, I've not decided exactly where I'm gonna put this on the frame yet. I was thinking at first maybe have it mounted somewhere here, up at the top. The graphics card is gonna be vertically mounted on a, a Gen 4 riser, so that's gonna be down here somewhere. So maybe it could go down at the bottom as well. Maybe could use this bottom bracket to hold it in place down at the bottom. But I've seen a spot that I think it will look absolutely brilliant. Uh, so like I said, radiators either side. Technically this here is for mounting your pump res combo or a pump or reservoir or whatever. But I'm thinking we could mount the LCD display using that area of the frame. And I think, for me, that's looking like the favorite option at the moment. So I'm gonna to have to potentially make some kind of frame or mounting bracket or something, or I'll have to modify the frame here, maybe cut it out, sink this in so it is kind of flush with the frame or somehow mount it from the back and cut that out and make it. But I'm gonna work that out anyway. That, Again, I think that will probably be the second video, but I just thought I'd give you a look at that and see what you think. Do you think that is the best place for it, or would you prefer to see it mounted up here or down at the bottom? Let me know what you think in the comment section. As I mentioned earlier, cooling the CPU and GPU is going to be done by a custom loop, and they're gonna be individual loops for CPU and GPU, so two reservoirs, two pumps, uh, two sets of radiators, and two lots of tubing. What I really want to show you though, because the, uh, the cooling is mainly going to be supplied by EK, uh, but we have some of the new EK quantum surface radiators. We've been waiting for these absolutely ages to be released. And I've got to say that these are the most impressive looking radiators I've seen for a long time. I wish I'd waited a little bit longer to put my order in because apparently EK do these in white. White would have gone perfectly with the theme of the system, would have saved me some jobs to do. But what I want to show you is how these radiators are put together. And I think these are a modder's dream because 
if you look at these uh, brackets that hold the fans on, pretty normal, usual looking, they don't look anything special. But if you look at these end plates on both ends, so you can see on this side we've got one and this has got like a, it's kind of a matte or a satin silver finish, which as it comes from the factory looks pretty nice indeed. But the reason I think that these are so good for modding is because if you take a look here, you can see the screws and it's same in both ends of these uh, these end pieces, they're both screwed on. So all you need to do is remove these screws from the top and the bottom. Then the fan brackets at the side, they just lift off both sides. You can just lift both of those off. And then once you've lifted those off, these need taken out these fittings and the uh, plugs in the end, remove those. And then these end pieces just slide off. And then when you've disassembled everything, you're just left with these fan brackets. So these are nice and easy then to prepare for painting or whatever you're gonna do with them, hydro dipping or wrapping them with a wrap or whatever. Nice and easy then to prepare these. And then you also got then the two end covers as well. So they're completely separate from the radiator. And again, when they're separate from the radiator like that, nice and easy to prepare for painting or whatever you plan to do with them. And it also means that if you're gonna be spray painting these fan brackets and these top and bottom pieces, you don't need to mask off the radiator if you're not going to paint the radiator as well because I tend to not really bother painting the radiator because if you've got fans covering it, you don't tend to see the original colour that much anyway. So I think these are looking really good and I think they're going to end up in a lot of modified systems because of how modular they are and how you can take them apart really easily and you should be able to customise them very easily and then reassemble them, put them back together and they should look exactly how you want them to. So that's the radiators, and I'm gonna, like I said, have one on either side of the system, positioned centrally on these wings, and these are the 480 mil versions, so 420 mil fans fit on here. These are the EK Quantum Surface X480M, so these are the thick 58 millimeter version. So they're the radiators, really glad to see that those are here, and. One other thing about these radiators, which you've not been able to have with EK before, is you can choose now where your fittings go. So you can have them on the ends or the sides, and they're also a cross-flow radiator as well. So you can have a, an inlet or an outlet on the opposite end, which you never used to be able to do with EK's previous radiators. So they're the radiators, they're looking good. For the CPU block, it's an EK Quantum Velocity 2 AM4 block. As you can see, it's the it's got a peel on it for one. You can see it's the nickel and black acetal version. This looks all right for the theme in terms of the nickel side, it's gonna work with a silver theme, but the black acetal, not really gonna match the theme, so I'm planning on doing something with that. And then the GPU block is the EK Quantum Vector. This is the Quantum Vector Master, so technically it's for the 6950 or 6900 series. Uh, Aorus Master and Extreme cards, but luckily this also fits the gaming OC cards. I actually used it in a previous AMD build that I did, and the water block works fine. So this, I've been assured, will fit the 6950 XT card as well. Again, it's not quite perfect for the themes. So we got these black acetal parts on the top and the end. Again, I'm thinking maybe try the vinyl wrap on these, see how that works. Maybe even vinyl wrap the front as well, or maybe vinyl wrap parts of it and leave the central water block that is nickel plated. Leave that exposed because again, that should work well with the white and silver theme that we're trying to achieve here. And then we have a back plate for that as well. So it's a, an EK back plate. That is a nickel plated back plate. So that should be fine. Shouldn't need anything in terms of modding for that. And then the pump res combos. So I've gone for the EK Quantum Kinetic TBE 300. So these are pretty long. And originally I was thinking I'd mount one either side of the motherboard using that mount. But if I use that LCD mount there, that's not gonna be available for mounting the reservoir. So I might just mount the reservoirs in front of the radiators um, pretty much centrally on the radiators. The fittings, we're gonna be using the EK Quantum Torque fittings. And as you can see, these are the nickel plated. So again, these work well with the theme of the system. They're 16 millimeter outer diameter. 
And the tubing is actually alpha cool hardline tubing because I love using satin tubing lately. So this is ideal. EK doesn't do any satin tubing, unfortunately, in 16 millimeter. In fact, I don't think they do any clear satin tubing. So we're using this alpha cool clear satin tubing and I hope hopefully that it'll work with the EK fittings. I've also got two of these as well. So these are the Barrow multi-mode protector with alarm. So what these are basically is a heat or temperature sensor. So we're gonna have one of these connected to each loop. So one for the CPU, one for the GPU loop, and they'll be just put in somewhere where they look symmetrical with each other. Uh, so these will be there as a coolant temperature sensor, heat sensor. And I also think you can set up an alarm. So if the, if the coolant gets to a certain temperature, it'll sound an alarm. So they're gonna be going into the system as well somewhere. I might try and get some flow indicators as well and fit those in. I've also got some cable sleeving for the power supply cables. So this is an MDPCX natural white. That's a nice bright white. And then the closest thing I could get to looking like a silver is this Platinum X also from MDPCX. And these were supplied by Pex and PCs. Uh, I'll be making the cables up completely from scratch. And what I've done is I've bought some white wire. So this is a 16 gauge wire. And the reason I've gone for white wire is because when you push the wire down the sleeve in, you can't really see the white wire. But if you were to use black wire, I don't know how well you can see this, but when you push black wire down there, you can see it and it kind of ruins the effect. So we're using white wire and I tend to use the 16 gauge for everything. So the 24 pin, the PTIE cables and the EPS cable. So that should look good. We've also got all the Molex crimp terminal ends as well for that. And a bunch of new connectors for PCI 24 pin, etc. So that's basically all the hardware covered. You've got a rough idea of the plan. The system is going to be wall mounted when it's finished. Oh, there is one other thing as well about this system, which I almost forgot to mention, which is pretty important. When this system is all finished and built up and complete, we've done with all the videos, you guys are happy with how it looks. We're gonna be giving the system away in a competition. So one of you lucky viewers will be able to own this system once it's complete. So with that out of the way, it's time to start on some of the mods. I'm gonna start by preparing the parts that need painting. So the chassis, I'm still undecided whether I'm gonna paint that myself or whether I'm gonna send that to be professionally painted. It also needs a, probably a mod for where the LCD screen is going to go. So I'll leave that for later. I've already took apart one of the radiators. So that's one job out of the way. I need to disassemble the other radiator because that's all gonna be painted and also need to disassemble the motherboard. There's quite a lot to take off this. I'm planning on doing something with the heat sinks, partly painted, maybe some polished aluminium as well. And obviously the shrouds as well, they're gonna be painted up white and do something with these heat sinks here as well. Maybe strip these back to bare aluminium. So there's gonna be a lot of disassembly. Uh, I think we'll speed this footage up and then come back and all these parts will be nice and newly refreshed in white ready for the new theme.
we've made some decent progress. The motherboard mod is complete, as you can see. That's looking exactly how I expected it to, so that's good. You'll have seen from the early bits of video that I completely disassembled the motherboard, all the heat sinks, everything removed from the motherboard. All the aluminium parts I soaked in a caustic soda solution to strip off the anodized coating. They were all back to the bare aluminium. And then most of the parts are painted white. Obviously, that's the color scheme that we're using with this system, except for the M.2 heat sink. So all these have been sanded down starting from a 120 grit right up to a 2500 grit and then polished so they've got an almost mirror finish to them so really nice shiny silver finish the heat sink on the vrms as well that's had the anodized coating stripped off it as well and that's just a bare aluminium and then those parts have been sealed as well with a sealer to help protect them from corrosion so motherboard's looking good so far i've also done some work on the EK Velocity 2 CPU block. You can see the part that was black Acetal is now white, so that's also been painted white. Acetal is a difficult plastic to get paint to adhere to, so you have to use some good quality plastic primer on that. And as you can see, if we just drop this roughly in place, it uh, looks pretty good on that motherboard. So all oh, that's looking really nice. I'm really happy with how that's turned out so far. That's looking good. And I've also painted the fan brackets for the EK surface radiators. So they're white now, they were black. These end pieces, I'm still not 100% sure what I'm gonna do with these yet. I don't know whether to leave them in this like satin, titanium, silver, metallic finish, or whether to try and match them up with the mirror polished chrome effect. So I've had a little practice actually with one of these using a chrome or a mirror finish vinyl wrap. It's only a cheap wrap because I just wanted to buy something cheap just to have a practice with. Doesn't look bad at the minute, but there are you know some imperfections and I've definitely not perfected the wrapping process. So what I've done is I've ordered some mm, better quality and more expensive chrome or mirror finish wrap and I'm going to give that another go so we'll um, we'll retry that or we'll come back to that in another video but I'm still not 100% sure let me know what you think do you think we should stick with the satin titanium finish do you think it goes with the rest of the theme of the system or do you think we should try and make these a chrome or mirror finish to match the rest of the chrome or mirror finish parts? Let me know what you think in the comment section about that. So that's about it for this video. We'll pick up with this again in the next video. There's some more of the water cooling parts to bring into the white and silver theme. I need to reassemble those radiators when we decide what we're gonna do with those end pieces. Also in the next video, I'm planning on making a surround or a mounting frame or something for the LCD screen as well. I need to test these parts as well, make sure that this is all running right after the disassembly and reassembly. I might also, while this is on the test bench, have a look at some optimizations with the AMD software, see if there's any way we can overclock the 5800X3D, maybe with base clock overclocking and look at some optimization of the GPU as well. So for this video, that's it. I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know what you think of the project and how it's going and the direction it's going in at the moment. Let me know in the comment section. Uh, if you've enjoyed watching this video, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. And if you wanna help support KitGuru, if you like what we do, head over to our store and pick up some merch. And as always, if you wanna catch up on the in-depth technical reviews, head over to the website. Mm -hmm.